Last episode, I built a huge factory, rammed it full of machines to make blocks, and visited Foxy in order to steal some ideas for delivery systems. Today, I'll get my first flatbed truck up and running, build working rail crossings, do lots and lots of terraforming, and even add more machines to make more blocks. And between episodes, I've basically just been watching my van, because I've managed to get all of the stations wired up, and it's just mesmerizing watching this thing go around. So yeah, it's gonna go around here, it's gonna pull into a system over here that doesn't exist yet but it will do soon. And the good news is I've also solved the train problem by ignoring it. It turns out this thing can just go straight through the train and it doesn't cause any issues because they're actually on different lines. And with how long I've been watching it, I'm actually yet to see the truck go through the train accidentally. I, I did literally park it on the tracks to test and it hasn't been causing any issues, so I'm sure it's fine. But although we've got the truck going around and doing its thing, it basically pulls in over there, then it reverses out, comes past here, reverses into this bit, and it stops at all these stations. It's not actually collecting anything at the moment because I haven't hooked this up yet. And that's because I haven't built the delivery system over here and to be honest I think we're gonna do something nice and simple and yes it's raining of course it's raining it's always raining and what I want to do is make use of the fact that we've got all these drawers on the back here and pretty much just connect them all up into one big long line and we'll do the same with the ones on that side then we'll probably just go across the roof or something I don't really know but either way we'll connect up both sides underground might make more sense actually but either way we'll get everything connected up and then we'll just have the truck offloading from here directly into a drawer controller and then it will just sort everything out straight away. That way we haven't got to add another bajillion conveyor belts. We've got enough going on in here as it is. And I think setting up that delivery system is probably what I'm going to do first, because once we've done that, we can do all the terraforming around this area and make it look nice. Because although this road looks pretty cool, the rest of it looks pretty rubbish. And you'll also be pleased to know I've sorted out my Create backpack, so everything here is actually locked in place now. If we have a look here, you can see that all of this has a memory. So if I completely empty a slot, it will always just go back in the exact same slot no matter what you take out, which is marvellous. The idea being that over time I'll learn where stuff is in the backpack and it should just be a lot quicker for me to build stuff. I swear I spent half my life looking for things. And I need to wait for the truck to come back over because next time it gets over here I need to basically steal the schedule so that it stays here and then we can get everything linked up as we need it. Can't do that without the truck. I'm assuming it's around that corner because I can't see it. And I have to say watching this thing reverse out and drive off is probably one of the most satisfying parts. Another one being when it reverses over on this side as well. Oh, love it. Here it comes. Drivey, drivey. So yeah, we're going to make a road that goes all through the middle here. Pretty much follows where that dirt line is. It's not too far off, I suppose. But for now, I'm taking your schedule, Mr. Fly. Much better than monkeys. Less violent. So let's grab some bits and bobs from here. We'll need some shafts, some belts, storage interface, some brass casings to make you look nice. Okay, that actually works out quite well. Because what I could do is literally just have a chute that goes straight into a drawer down here. And then it's just nice and discreet, isn't it? Yep, I think I like that plan. Let's do it. So we need lots of trims. We're going to need some chutes. If we literally just stick that there with a chute on top, then we just need to hook up the trim. And in the config, I have extended the range of my drawers. They actually stretch to 75 blocks now instead of the standard 25, I think it is. So this should reach all the way down. I'm going to need a draw controller as well. I wonder how much of this stuff I've actually got. I think we're going to need some stone and I'm probably going to need to go grab a diamond. So we've got some diamond in here. We've got stone. And I think we already had everything else. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. And I'll just put the draw controller in there. So now if I do that, I should lock all of the drawers. Although I should probably connect up the ones on the other side first. And I might as well just do that underground, considering I've already dug out a huge chunk. So now to see if the locks work all the way to the drawer at the back here. Hopefully it can reach the whole warehouse. It does. Amazing. So now we know that's working, I just need to assign some of those drawers to actually have items. So let's just grab a little bit of everything we're making. And then let's do some organizing, shall we? So we'll have bricks in the first one. Let's make sure we're putting all of the filters in where needed. Then chuck them in the back. And then we're going to do all the blocks along here, I think. So in theory, that should work now if we just set up all of the funnels and things on this side and actually supply some power. That might be helpful as well. That's easy enough, thanks to our brand new hole we've got down here. So let's just add some funnels as well before we turn it all on properly. So let's stick that back on. And okay, looks like it's doing its thing. Now we just need to do the same on the other side. So I think everything is set up correctly. Hopefully if we restart the schedule on the truck here, he's going to do his little loop. He'll actually pick stuff up. And we should end up with full conveyor belts over here. I think that's going to be the easiest way to test. If we end up with extra items back here, we know that it's worked. So you, sir, can have your schedule back. I'm going to take a pew in the back here. Hopefully this is going to work.
Well, it seems to be picking everything up just nicely. And the funnels here are just set to deposit eight items at a time. So we're probably only picking up about a stack and a half to two stacks each time. Basically, I don't want to sort of overload everything. I just want to keep it nice and chill and let this thing go around and do its thing over time. I mean, it's only me in the world. I don't need everything to be super fast now, do I? This side's working as well. Excellent. And now hopefully this will all work as well. That should connect up just nicely. We should start seeing items come out, at least on the tracks that don't have. Yeah, there we go. Look at the back there. Excellent. The system's working. So we should get some bricks and brick blocks. Yep, there's the brick blocks. There's the bricks. We've already got the gold and the quartz. Brilliant. The system works. But although it works, a lot of the area still looks, well, just not good. Not good at all. So that's my next task. I think we're going to do a whole bunch of terraforming. We're going to get all the roads in. We're going to get things looking nice. And I'm probably going to try and hide some of these stations as well. Because I suppose now we've got these items here, we can add them to the Beardy Delivery Network. Which means I need to hide these stations somewhere, get them set up with the redstone so they activate the right things as and when needed. And basically just do what we've done on the other warehouse. I sense an incoming montage. That was a monster session of block placing, but I think everything's looking a whole lot better around here now. So I've actually wrapped all the stations over here in the same signal station we have over that side. I think it just works and makes sense. And the stations that were here, I've now moved underground. So they're all still linked up, but they're just not visible anymore, which is good. I've also sorted out the road, although I haven't sort of finished off this side of it because I don't really know what I'm doing there yet. I've extended the road all the way around, as you can see, and the truck actually follows it now. We've sorted out this area. And now that we have the Create Deco mod, we also have these, which are actually functional vaults, but they look like shipping containers and they really do help tie the area together. They look really cool. I like those. And with a few stacks of logs as well, this is kind of like the storage yard area. I'll probably add some more stuff in future, but these other big areas that we've got here are going to be for buildings and car parks and things like that. And there will eventually be a giant blaze cake factory here, so I've just ignored that section for now. I've also sorted out the sides of the buildings and made a start on the back as well if we take a look around here. I've just kind of walled it all off. We've got a couple of side entrances now as well. I just need to do a bit of detailing around this area, really. It's the back, so we'll ignore it for now. So with everything set up over here, there's actually something I want to test, and that involves these signals here and these crossings over here because well they're on different tracks so at the moment the van is driving through the train we could just ignore it but i do wonder if we can maybe do something a bit more fancy it's time to run some experiments but for that i'm going to need my small train and my small train is not over here because i actually hitched a ride on the lava train last time i came by but to be honest, it's probably about time we upgraded that tiny weird little train anyway. I mean, we're making cool vehicles now. Maybe we can actually make one to get around on. I mean, if my recent visit to Foxy's taught me anything, it's that driving cars on train tracks is really quite fun. Even if it does result in death, but that seems to happen with me regardless. So let's just put a bit of rail down to build on. Grab ourselves some train casings and a station. And let's make ourselves another 50s style vehicle of some kind. And if we use an invisible bogey, that should give us a bit more freedom as well. Oh, I probably shouldn't build this here because, yeah, we're right on the road. So let's just do it over here. And to be honest, we can probably get away with just using one bit of track here. And that means we can actually have the wheels come down and so on. Well, first off, it looks like we need three bits of track for it to actually allow us to place a bogey. There we go. One truck. I think that should work nicely. Now to try and glue it all together without getting the track. But it looks like I can't assemble it unless I've got at least three bits of track it means i'm gonna need to re-glue it so i also don't get these pieces Jeez. so hopefully this will work this time and won't take the rail with it we'll just call this beardy one for now i think the best way to test this is going to be to relocate it over here what have we left behind only a tiny bit of the front not bad so let's just try gluing those again 
assemble the train, move it over here, and nothing left behind. And we didn't take any rail with us either. This is good. So let's take it for a quick lap. <laughs> this is so much better than that weird little train I've been driving around in. And the good news is, now I can do my testing. But first, I really need to clean up my inventory. This is getting out of hand. And I guess the best way to do that is going to be just to drive my truck all the way home. And I'm instantly realising when I get there, I'm going to put a barrel on this thing and fill it with coal. This is slow. So what I want to try and do is have it so that if there is a train in this section here, the van will not go through because basically it doesn't look right if it does go through a train and I'd rather avoid that altogether. Plus it could look quite cool, especially if we can get working barriers, but that's step two. Step one is just to check if we can stop this van from crossing the rails when there's something in here. And there's a couple of ways we can do that, I think. The first is to use the signals we already have here. So when there is a train inside that area, it literally just gives off a redstone signal. And then we can send that to the station to turn off the redstone signal at the station and just change the schedule on the van that goes round so that it will only leave the stations in front of the crossings if the station has a redstone signal. Does that make sense? Let me just quickly show you. So we'll just stick a couple of redstone torches in there for now. And if we go down to this station and we have a setup similar to this, what this means is currently the station doesn't have a redstone signal. So if we set the schedule right, the van shouldn't drive off. However, when there's not a train in that area, it will provide this station with a redstone signal, allowing the truck to go. I think that should work. But I guess the only way to test is to find the truck. Oh, perfect timing. And grab his schedule. Yoink. Probably go to sleep too before stuff starts blowing up. I have not added any lighting here. Okay, so the schedule. So this is where we are, the drop-off. Currently, it's just set to wait for 30 seconds. But if we also add a redstone signal required. So station powered. And I'm hoping it will still wait the 30 seconds first. But I guess we're about to find out. If not, we'll just add a second station just in front. If I move this van out of the way, that should power the station and let that thing go. Maybe. Yep, okay, there we go. So he's driving around just fine. Now, if I block it again and just wait for the truck to come all the way back round. So here we go. I'm just going to sit here for a couple of minutes and hope that the truck doesn't go any further. Nope, the truck has still gone. That didn't work. What that means is that the schedule isn't an AND gate. It basically it doesn't need to meet both those conditions. It just needs to meet one of them. But not a problem. We can solve this by adding a secondary station. We'll just add it directly in front. We'll call it crossing one, and we'll just move all this over a block. And if we grab Matey Boy's schedule, there we go, and add in a new stop, call that crossing one. So we'll still have it wait 30 seconds to drop off, and then it will only go past this station if it's powered, in theory. Let's give it a go. So hopefully this time he should just sit here and wait. There we go, he's just nudged forward, and he should stay there now until... I move this train out of the way, although we actually have a whole bunch of trains waiting to get past. So he might be there for a while because all of these are then going to come in and, yeah, do the same thing. And I also need to put a redstone signal thing on this. I do wonder, though, do they work if I just put them directly on the poles? Guess we're about to find out. No, it would appear not. So I am going to need to do that here as well. Do the same thing. And then we'll just put another signal over here as well, just so once it goes past that point, it can carry on and do its thing. But yeah, we can hide that one underground. It doesn't need to be visible. And hopefully, as soon as I go past that signal, the van should drive off. The trains all seem to have gone the other way, which is good. Yes, look at that. The system works. So now I just need to hook up the other crossings here. And what I'll do is I'll set up a different signal for this crossing and then a third signal for that crossing there, just so we've got a bit more control. So with a few more tweaks to Matey Boy's schedule over here. So once we've got the clay blocks, it will go to crossing three, then crossing two, then drop off, then crossing one, and then do the whole loop again. So hopefully I should prevent any collisions. Now I think I've got them all set up correctly. The question is, will it crash? I guess we're about to find out. He's waiting. Excellent stuff. So if we now reverse and then go down here and into this one here, it should hopefully stop again. 
Oh, this is amazing. I love it. So that's awesome. Now we know that that works, we can try and figure out if we can actually have some moving barriers as well. I don't see why not. We just need to take that redstone signal and make something activate. And I don't believe any trains use this rail here, so I can just park my van over here and it should be out of the way for now. So if we want moving barriers, we're going to need to make use of some kind of a bearing. And I would imagine... A mechanical bearing is probably the one. Let's have a ponder. So that's not quite what we want. That's just a spinny thing. I mean, that's all very cool, but not really what we're after. But about three hours of messing around later, I think I have figured out how to get this working for us. So I have a mechanical bearing here, which is attached to this pole, and this can, of course, spin round and round and round. But because we just want it to go 90 degrees that way and then 90 degrees back, the trick was to use this, a sequenced gear shift. And this will trigger when it receives a redstone pulse. So if I push this button, it will close this barrier. It will then wait there until it receives another redstone pulse, such as this. And then it raises again. And to trigger that redstone pulse, I have a link receiver here, which if we go underneath to the station, is connected up to this observer, which is actually watching the other one to see whether there's a train in that section of track. And when there is a train in that area, this will emit a pulse. And then this just extends it a little bit just to make sure that this sender can pick it up, which is what makes the barrier go up and down. So it all ties together nicely. So we actually have a train coming in now, so we can see the whole thing in action. So let's just quickly fly over this side. You can see the barriers are up at the moments and this time we might work out well actually we might end up with the truck trapped in here as well so as soon as that train goes off like this here we go the barriers come down these barriers are coming down i do need to speed these ones up though and this truck will just sit here while the train goes past then the barriers will come back up and as soon as the truck's done delivering it can carry on along its way look at that Wonderful. Gives a whole lot more life to this place. But that's enough messing around out here. I've got some more machines to make. And for that, I think we're going to utilize the top half of this building here because there's a lot of space up here. There's not currently a way in, though, so we should probably make one of those. And we can do with a bit more floor in here as well. But the important thing is we've got lots of space. And up here, I plan to make diorite, granite, andesite, and of course, quartz blocks and things like that that we can make from downstairs. And if we've got space, we may even filter off some red sand because there's things we can make from that too. But because this cobble gen down here already can't keep up, I'm actually just going to stick another one down this side. And that's what we're going to use for the farms upstairs. So we just do the same thing here that we did on the other side. We've got a bunch of cobble coming in. Let's put a floor in so we don't fall in the lava. I've now got the floors in. I've set in the threshold switch for the cobble generator. And I've rooted up some separate power for the rest of the things we need up here. And this time, because it's upstairs, it's a bit more hidden away. It's not like down there. I'm going to do a lot of the moving around of items using drawers and drawer trims. Primarily as leg prevention, but also it means everything can be a bit more compact and I can make more blocks up here than I would have been able to otherwise. And for this to work, we're going to need a lot of spruce trims. So my thinking is I'm just going to run this along the back wall here. And most of that should be covered by the time we've built the machines anyway. But we're also going to run it around this wall as well, just so we've got full access everywhere. And we can always tidy this up as necessary later. But for now, I'm sure it'll be fine. And the first thing I want to make up here is is diorites and there's a few different ways we could use flint and calcite and lava but that just sounds complicated i think the simplest one for us is going to be to make use of the quartz we've got downstairs because we've got thousands of it and of course the cobble that we're already generating i think the best way to get this to work is maybe if we quickly head downstairs is to connect this drawer here up to the top because that means we'll always still have quartz available in the vault and only excess quartz will be taken over to the new place we can just get this connected up there so now we should be able to pull quartz out of this in theory. We're also going to need quite a lot of power up here, so I think it makes sense just to stretch this all across. I think there's another storm going on. So what we're going to need to make diorite is two quartz and two cobbles. So we've just hooked up some slave controllers onto some funnels and some depots, which is going to pull that out of the system for us. To make this work, we're going to need a bunch of mechanical crafters, but that's not something we actually have in our Create Backpack because, well, we don't normally need them. But if I grab some wood to get some crafting tables, we should have everything else we need on us. So let's make a bunch of these. Ha, look at that. We've completed some quests <laughs> oh dear not gonna lie i completely forgot about the quest book we should probably check that out we've probably got loads of free stuff but we'll save that for another time for now let's figure out this diorite machine if we put some andesite funnels on the back there and connect up an arm to do that and another arm to go in the opposite corners to put in the cobble i think i've done that right and then just give everything a little bit of power I should make diorite. Look at that. Let's just stop that for a moment while we figure out the storage. And I think we should just be able to have it go straight back into the drawer like that. 
And we'll give that drawer some upgrades too. Excellent. Well, that was easy. Now, how do we make granite? Diorite and quartz. So we can literally do exactly the same machine again, but just do it here. And in fact, while I think of it, I should probably put in an off switch as well. So we'll stick a clutch in there. We'll put that there. And it's from quartz to diorite. That makes sense. That's set to receive. And we'll just stick a threshold switch on the back here. So let's just repeat this setup again for the next one. Though I appear to have used drawers at the bottom there, not trims. That's better. But it's not quite the same machine because I only need two panels for this one, but it's doing its job. We're now getting lots of granite. Let's make sure we're locking, quantifying and upgrading this as well. Oh, this is easy. This is. Next up is andesite, which is just diorite and cobble. That's nice and easy as well. Let's just do this all over again. And there we go. We've automated andesite. We've hardly taken up any space at all. Now, is there anything else we can make out of diorite that's worth doing up here? Looks like we could have used basins and mixers to make these things. Oh, well, it's done now. Huh, would you look at that? We can turn granite into red sand. Safe to say I think that's fine for now. However, there's definitely other things we can make with quartz. Primarily quartz blocks and, of course, smooth quartz. Would be nice to make some rose quartz automatically as well, but we haven't automated redstone yet. But we'll do some automated packing to get blocks of quartz. That should be fairly simple. There we go. There's our little quartz machine going for it. Having a wonderful time. I'd say we're making some pretty good progress. But let's get some smooth quartz as well while we're here. And there we go. Now we're producing smooth quartz as well. 16 at a time. Pretty make this whole area look a little bit safer let's get some barriers up well i'd say that's pretty good going for today that's another five blocks we're producing but now i need to figure out how we're going to get them over to that warehouse hmm. i've got an idea that may be silly but it may be quite good if it works and maybe it's about time we had an aerial delivery system. We could do something fairly simple, maybe with some monorails and some shipping crates potentially. And we could literally just have it pull into here, load up on stuff, and then go back down again. That could be quite cool. So let's start by making this hole here a little bit bigger and getting a monorail line in. So let's start just by putting in a straight line over here. Let's see where about on this building it's going to connect. I think I've got it in line here. Yep, this appears to be in line. But there's not a lot of room in here, so it, I think it's literally just going to have to be like a hanging shipping container, and that's it. But we can probably make that work. Let's smash some more holes. Let's see if we can make a tiny shipping container that hangs on a monorail. This may not go well. So this is what the shipping container is going to look like from the outside, and inside we've got a tiny bit of space. And I know we need at least three blocks because we need... One for the seat and one for the controls going each way, so it's a train. That gives us a tiny bit of space for storage and the storage interfaces. And we also need to figure out how it knows what to pick up. This one could be a challenge. I'll bring you back in once I've got it figured out. So I think I've got it all worked out. And on the inside here, we've got our train controls, so we can go in both directions and a bit of headroom for the driver. We've then got a storage interface pointing out that way. And we've got a toolbox, which I've indicated what resources to pick up. And I've just filled the other slots with random stuff for now. If we make more blocks up here, we can, of course, swap that out and we've also got room for more toolboxes if needed because we can put them on top of the train controls here but the important thing is how does it know what to load up and that is all down to this arm because it will only feed things into here if it has somewhere to put it and it has access to all five resources here or at least it will once i build three more of these so in theory it should just pick up the ones it can and put them in there and i'll leave that on round robin that should work fine so let's just wall up the last bit of this stick it all together now let's turn it into a train and see if it actually works no no structure attached to bogey. Ah, okay. Let's just stick a block in there for now and glue it in. Okay, well, it's made a train. Let's see if we can get in and take it for a spin. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, I think this could work. And we can even bring the walls in a bit. It doesn't need quite so much space, does it? We need to get a roof in, though. And, of course, we need to give it a driver. It looks like it's filled up what it can of the quartz. And, well, it didn't have much smooth quartz available, but it's put in what it had. So let's get these last three hooked up, and then we'll sort out the drop-off system over there as well. And I'll bring you back in once that's all done. And a short while later, I think we're all sorted. This shipping container is going backwards and forwards, and it's dropping off in here. And I pretty much just did the same thing I did outside. I've just got a storage interface with a funnel that goes into a draw controller or a draw controller slave, I should say. And then there's draw trim in here that I've just covered to make it look a little bit better. And that all connects up to this system. And once again, it just feeds into the vaults down the bottom here. But while I was doing that, I did notice a slight problem with our little delivery van over here. And that is that he had basically too much clay on him. The clay in here got full up, but he was still picking it up over there and it sort of jammed up the chute and 
and all sorts. So I had two options. I could have put a void upgrade on the brick box, but then we're just making loads of bricks we don't need, so that seemed a bit pointless. But the other option was just to have an off switch. So we're now checking the level of bricks in here. Once it goes over 50%, it just turns this on, and that is linked all the way over to here. And if we look at the brick funnel here, we can see that's now locked. The bricks are no longer coming out, which means this thing isn't getting full up with bricks. And it just keeps everything flowing nicely. It was also quite late by the time I finished that, and I didn't fancy recording any clips, so I just chilled out and sorted out the little bit of landscaping over there as well, ready for our blaze factory. But sadly, that's going to have to wait for a future episode because I am all out of time for today. But I'm so pleased with how this area is coming together. It's awesome that we're making loads of blocks, and there's still more we can make. We've still got all the things from red sand and other bits and bobs. But most importantly, we've got our crossings working, we've got our van going around, and we're preventing collisions, which is always a good thing. But I hope you've enjoyed it, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.